Hola community, it's Pablo Vasquez with another recap. Please sit down because this one, it's gonna blow your mind. Just let's start with the user interface. One of the most requested features since there are modifiers in Blender, it's been like 15, 20 years maybe, it's being able to drag and drop to, to order them by other than just the arrows well that it's now implemented finally in blender 2.90 so far it's only in the modifiers but this will translate to other areas such as uh, grease pencil modifiers or constraints for bones and objects what's cool about this implementation is that modifiers are now like panels so they can also have sub panels for better organization they have one column layout so it's easier to scan another cool feature is that while you're drawing these panels if you reach for example the bottom of the editor and there's still more to see you, if you hold in there you're gonna see how it scrolls automatically on the same on the, on the way up so these little quality of life improvements are gonna make such a difference over at the viewport you're gonna see that curves in edit mode look a little bit different because now the normals are hidden by default so you don't have so much noise when you don't need it and also the handles of the non-selected points are hidden by default as well to make it a bit cleaner this is a setting that you can change in the overlay to show all the handles like it used to be only the selected points or no handles at all there's a new preference for the default size of empties when used in collection instances Dragging the editor's border should be even better now thanks to a bigger action zone between these lines. And do support has been added for the text field. So while you're typing and you undo, it used to like undo like the whole blender. Not anymore. Now it's gonna undo only the characters that you type. Another quality of life improvement. The file browser got support for shell links on Windows and improvements on Mac aliases. The eyedropper feature now allows you to sample from other windows, not only the, the main one, so it's really handy when you're working with like multiple screens, for example. There's a new gizmo for snapping, it's generic, so it's gonna be used in many tools, at the moment you can see it in the ruler. Measure, sorry, it used to be called ruler, that's why it's a measure tool. In cycles, the point light size is now called radius for consistency and clarity, it's, it's actual radius, it's a, it's a spherical lamp, light. And lastly, the video sequencer has been lots of little tweaks here and there, mainly in the user interface, the new button to swap the effects input, adjustments in the text panel, a new proxy menu, a color picker for the color strip, warnings when the proxy encoding failed, and a whole lot of polishing here and there in the sequencer. And all these changes were done by one contributor from the community, so thank you, Peter, for working in the sequencer. Let's see what's new in modeling. New tool alert. There is a new tool that allows you to create mesh primitives, like a little cube, a sphere, a cone, or anything, really, but in a more visual way. At the moment it's fairly basic, but it's the foundations to make it even better, like snapping automatically to the normals of another surface, or adding bevel or other kind of widgets. It wouldn't be an update without sculpting news. Remember the cloth brush that broke the internet in 283? Well now, in 2.90 it's gonna be available as well as a mesh filter, so you can apply it to the whole mesh, you can paint some vertices by masking them out. So yeah, this cloth magic in meshes keeps uh, spreading. <laughs> Improvements were also done in the post brush. Not only you can post your meshes, but now you can also scale and transform the form. The post brush can also now use face sets as the FK, fake FK, F, FFK when posing. And the twist axis has been improved as well. Cycles. Two huge things. Number one, have you ever run into this issue where you have these blocky parts of your shading in the in the shadow terminator? That's the issue that that's how it's called. It's the the area where you have the light and the shadows. Well, that would happen if you had a low resolution mesh, and the only solution was to basically add more subdivisions. Well, not anymore. Now there is a setting that you can tweak to control it. It's a per object setting because the different objects need different settings. But yeah. Just say goodbye to that issue forever. <laughs> this fix by Stefan was inspired on another render engine, open source or called Apple Seed. So kudos to them and Stefan and whoever reviewed the patch. <laughs> Number two, if you use Blender 2.83, you probably are familiar with one of the biggest features in that release, the AI accelerated viewport denoising provided by NVIDIA RTX graphics cards. Well, you no longer need an RTX graphics card because it also works in older NVIDIA graphics cards. It should work in all the graphics cards with Maxwell architecture and higher. To know if your graphics card is supported, you should Google the, your name of the graphics cards and the architecture. Basically, all the GTX 900 and 10 
10,000, that should work. And even some models of the GTX 750. So yeah, get the latest build, enable optics, and use denoising in the viewport. Library overrides improvement. Finally, the modifiers, camera data blocks, and constraints are now overridable, which means you can finally override those properties like a modifier in linked objects. And the favorite section of everybody, myself included, is performance. So okay, come on, please. H have a seat here next to, next to the dog. You need to sit down to hear this. Subdivision modifier is now up to 10 times faster. A thousand percent improvement. It's just magic. Now, it's not real magic. You just get a PhD to work on it, some real serious work, and those things happen. Sergey Sharivin made the modifier up to 10 times faster and I asked him is that GPU that's why it's so fast and he said not really it's mainly CPU but the idea is that GPU comes next but the first step is to look okay, at let's make it faster for CPU so, and so just I don't know some optimization some, some like weird magic <laughs> There are some bits of GPU in there, but it's mainly CPU. It says that GPU will come after, so we can expect even faster speeds. That has to be like the best news I got all this quarantine. <laughs> Not only that, but playback, it's also now a bit faster. In a test of one of the characters from Render Cloud, which is available for download, by the way, it went from 9.7 to 10.5 frames per second, so that it's almost one frame per second. But there is another improvement where in a more complex file from the Spring Open Movie, the playback on an AMD Ryzen went from 10 frames per second to 11.5 frames per second. So, hey, almost a frame per second here, almost two frames per second here. So if you pile them up, it's, uh, you know, they, they, they stuck up. FBX, while importing heavy animations, should be now almost twice as fast. And in the puppery section, let's see what's there. In modifiers, all vertex weight modifiers now have an option to normalize the weights. In fluids, the foundations have been laid for implementing OpenVDV file I.O. The annotation tool now has stabilization. The Grease Pencil build modifier now has a factor option. In the UV editor, the Sims from Islands operator now is going to take the selection into account. It's not going to apply it to the whole mesh. Eevee. A big refactor has been done in the material side of things, but it's all under the hood. This should fix though some issues that were with Mac OS. And the last one. When using armatures, if you ever run into the limit of 4096 bones uh, selectable when you're doing certain operations, well that limit now is up to 8192. <laughs> so yeah, go nuts. And that's all. Okay, now time to relax. What a week! It's actually more than a week. It's been more time. It's been like two or three weeks of development packed into one episode because the developers were focusing mainly on uh, back fixing for 2.83, which is out now, and now the focus is in 2.90. One thing we're mentioning is that remember the releases uh, like 2.82a or b or c, those corrective releases that only have back fixes. Well. Blender is dropping the A, the B, and the C, the letters, in those releases in favor of a more uh, a normal versioning system with the 0 0.0, 0 0.1, 0.2 so the first version of 2.83 is actually 2.83.0 and the uh, fix releases for that, which is the long-term release, is gonna be 83.1, 83.2, and so on and so forth so yeah, that means that 2.82a is gonna be the last, very last release to have a letter in its name. So yeah, we're getting older, we're becoming a bit more normal, more uh, semantic friendly very way of uh, versioning for Blender. 2.93 is still gonna use the same versioning system, so 2.90, 91, 92, 93 LTS and then 3.0. Which is when Blender is going to move into a more user-friendly, developer-friendly, and sysadmin-friendly way of versioning. Anyway, this video is way too long. Have fun, go download Blender at builder.blender.org, get the latest and try and report any bugs you might find. Go to fund.blender.org if you want to help this project keep moving forward. And I will see you again in the next video. Bye-bye. <laughs>